gentlemen, you are both drunk on cosmic wine. Welcome to the show. I'm Dr. Mark Sylvester. And I'm Dr. Richard Schulman. This, this is, is All Psych. Psych. We got to figure out how to shut her off. <laughs> she is She's on rice. Welcome, Rich, to Cyberland. How are your electrons uh, are, feeling? What's say? How are How your electrons, electrons feeling? feeling? Sparkly. Yeah, watch me manipulate your electrons. Ooh, bam. Do Definitely. I have to pay extra for that? Or does that come with the regular fee? Um, no, that one's that was a freebie. That one's a freebie. Woo. But in return, I would like a gesture of goodwill from you, also of no charge, by presenting <laughs> us with the with, uh, with the, the mental wealth tip thank you yes thank i would you. like a mental wealth tip of the day please go and so the does our uh, live of... studio audience yeah. hey people out there the mental wealth tip of the day i notice we don't say mental health because as you'll find out in today's episode it's all about health not just mental health so we call it mental wealth the mental wealth tip of the day is that grief will come in waves and it doesn't come in neat packages. Um, I had a patient tell me once that grief came in 100 foot waves and then there were 80 foot waves, then there were 20 foot waves and then there was quiet. And then you get hit with a 100 foot wave. So just love yourself through each wave. And that's sort of the mental wealth tip of the day. I like it, I like it. I always feel wealthier and, and more mental after, after your tips. I try but I, my best, um, Mark. I, I like both of those things for you. Maybe I'm very, not the mental one as much. I'm very excited. I brought my uh, extremely excited face today. Really? Wow. Because this topic we're talking about today, immunopsychiatry, is probably one of the cornerstones of, of our ethos here at Alt Psych, which stands... It's a, it's a, it's abbreviation for alternative psychiatry. And it's interesting, you know, patients ask me all the time, like what, what, what's so alternative about, about this place, about what you do. <clears throat> and, you know, I explain that we don't just give Prozac to everybody. We look for any and all other um, reasons that they may be ill and uh, treatments options as well. So what today's show I hope to do, and I hope that uh, you can help me not, sh not shank this one, not slice it into the woods for all you golfers. Don't think is, so. Is to get people really thinking about the mind-body connection, about inflammation, about our immune system, about how it connects to how we think, feel, and behave. So that's the task that we have and 40 minutes let's get on it doggone it get on it doggone so here's so, here's the tenant here's my tenant okay is that what you call it or is it tenant know. tenant, tenant rents racket. from you we have a tenant racket we can hit the ball yeah well i mean let's not do bat bitten here but i don't know let's go the basic Why, tenant got? of immunopsychiatry it has to do with inflammation and autoimmunity basically being among the the uh, etiology or origins or sometimes confounding variables of major psychiatric disorders from depression to schizophrenia. Um, what's so exciting and shocking and why I'm such a visionary here in this department. Um, I agree with that. Uh, matter of so, fact, I probably okay. should have called myself Elon Musk today instead of uh, Utre Dragnar. Although I, uh, I think I need to add some qualifications here to Utre. Okay. I mean, don't you think? Enjoy yourself. That's what we're doing. Yeah, here. I think to, for, 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 you know, for, for reliability. Okay. You, you know, know it's funny. When, Maybe when not we DDS. Were, when we decided to do this and I started looking things up for it, something occurred to me. I've said to people many times, you know, when I get sick, I turn, fortunately, I rarely do get sick. I turn into a four-year-old. Yeah, I am yeah. always a four-year-old, so. I, I was a nice four-year-old, but the, the um, it fits right in with this. 
that the it totally does you're right yeah you know because it, there's you, it, it changes you emotionally to be sick well the reason why it's elon musky is we're right on the precipice of changing the way we track practice psychiatry um and, and psychiatry has been a fairly rapidly evolving field thank god because it was crawling out of the dark ages but there is a very well established precedent among researchers, scientists, you know, bench scientists, the studies, the evidence, both nationally and internationally, that our immune system inflammation are extremely um, relevant and, and probably causal to a lot of the illnesses that psychiatrists routinely see and check boxes and throw pills at. And lo and behold, the vast majority of people are not helped to do that approach. So to answer the question, what is alternative psychiatry and why did it, why did we do it? It's because the tools that I was given in my training only were helping 30 to 40% of people. And I went to a lot of schools in my life and every single one of them, 30 to 40% was an F and I would have been kicked out and asked never to touch any uh, textbook or, or patient uh, again. So F minus minus is kind of the state that I think. It's why we are actually visionaries because we want results rather than just people fitting some kind of textbook model. And we're already starting to see the results here, but I think on a large scale, you know, the, the bench is gonna finally spill in. It, it takes, usually takes about 20 years for the medical education to change, kind of the, the approach to patients to change. These radical shifts are rare. It's not the norm for science. So we're really, really, really close and understanding um, of this field uh, of not only immunopsychiatry, we've talked about toxicokinetics as well, which is very similar to immunopsychiatry in that you know, it, it's looking at the cause of these illnesses like depression, bipolar, schizophrenia, and so on. So we're hoping this is gonna enhance our knowledge of the illness mechanism and therefore the approach, approaches to treatment. And a lot of what I've learned has been not only through the through the literature and, and going back and studying integrated health, but it's also been in in helping those people and my clinical practice seeing so many people get better with uh, the interventional modalities to treat autoimmunity and inflammation as opposed to the Prozac for, for all model. That's what makes I, you terrific, brother. I hate to pick on Prozac, but it's it's let's go for it. It's got thick skin. It's distinguished. It's it's the uh, makes money of money. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of the icon of uh, of the SSRI movement and and modern uh, psychiatry. So, you know, I know that you asked me to dumb this down a little bit, and I got a little too carried away with 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 you know pro inflammatory cytokines and. Well, I asked you to dumb it down for me. Circulating monoantibodies and autoantibodies well, I will, I will and monoclonals. Before you launch into things, which I know you're about to, I'm getting ready big to change, launch. Big change in my in my own work with uh, Samantha Haynes is that she's a lymph expert. Gee, I wonder if that has anything to do with inflammation and the autoimmune stuff. Oh yeah, because it's yeah, taking the toxins that. away. It's 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 remarkable that our practices would merge at this on this note because that they are because I know you do a lot of stuff with reducing inflammation for people. And if, if we're working with the emotions that are in the in the hormones of, of the lymph system as we process stuff, man, sounds like a deal. Well, you know, I, I came through the back door as an engineer into medicine. And one of the very first thoughts I had when I was unleashed into the world after my training was, why is it that psychiatrists know literally and i can pick on psychiatrists so i'm a psychiatrist they literally know nothing about organic causes of these illnesses they literally know nothing and the little that they did Thank get was like hey if someone's depressed make sure to check their thyroid you know and screen for thyroid dysfunction and most quite frankly don't even do that they'll do that in a hospital or they'll do it where it's convenient but it's alarming to me how much of this is 1800s medicine and its approach. Yes, we have modern pharmaceuticals, but if they were that great, we wouldn't, I wouldn't do what I was gonna, what I do. You wouldn't do what you do. 
and we wouldn't be here talking about immunopsychiatry because um, the assertion that I'm going to make is pro-inflammatory cytokines, circulating autoantibodies, the actual things that we know about the immune system influence the brain and therefore our mood, cognition, um, menta- you know, mentation, cognition, but also behavior. So, so basically what you're you telling me is, is there no difference between uh, physical and mental health? It's just health. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Whole health. Yeah. And then, well, you know, the stretch isn't, I, I think, I think patients understand this more than, than doctors because it's very, it's very common sense. And doctors tend to be overeducated and myopic and, and specialized technicians based on the information that they've given not to impugn doctors, but as, as a stereotype Mm -hmm. and their approach to problems, diseases, illnesses, and patients overall, um, they, they miss the big picture often. And I think that's where common sense comes from too. And most people know, well, Hey, if I, if, if grandma gets a urinary tract infection and she goes a little batty, right? it's because she had a urinary tract infection. Like if you're sick, that it makes you act funny and feel funny. That's what I was saying before. So let's just do something radical and picture that on a smaller scale or in a different setting. How about a younger person? How about somebody infected with a virus that's growing around? Uh, Especially when we don't know exactly what it does, but there are plenty of viruses and, and inflammatory states that we do know the mechanism of action we do know how it's affecting the brain and the the scientists know how it affects behavior but the clinical practice of psychiatry is about to change because of this and it has already changed here at alt psych <laughs> hey before you go further oh. and you're doing great i haven't um, gone anywhere it's okay could you define immunopsychiatry for people because you used the term a couple of times but i don't think we defined it well, it's kind of like I said, it's the it's understanding how inflammation and autoimmunity affects oh, psychiatric yeah. disorders. Yeah, kind of. A, well, that's different from psychoneuroimmunology, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's next week. No, we're that's a little that, bit that, deeper. But that was like before, seriously, because I remember talking to a, uh, an immune system expert years ago, and he was getting into psychoneuroimmunology. I think what that was that your mood would affect your immune system rather than the other way around is what it seems like to me is. Yeah. Yeah. I was trying to keep it simple, stupid here today, but that is pretty simple. That's the inner, that's the interconnection between what our body does to our mind and what our mind does to our body. We're We're mainly talking about what our body does to our mind today. Yeah, I know. I get it. But it seems to me that the research did not bear out the psycho neuroimmunology stuff nearly as well as what we're talking about today, the immunopsychiatry. And that's why I think this topic is really important. I think this one's much easier to explain and, and conceptualize and to convince people like, holy cow, how did we not see this before? This is really important. I want to see a psychiatrist that's actually going to look at something else besides a checklist in a book written in the 70s that literally has very nonspecific symptoms because that approach is going to miss 70% of people that you would have otherwise been able to help if you just, you know, thought of the without, body. Without, without side effects, I might add. Oh, yeah. Frequently without prolonged su- suffering without, you know, first doing no harm. So that's why this is so exciting to me because it it will revolutionize biologic psychiatry, functional psychiatry, holistic psychiatry. Um, And and current practice psychiatry will be um, uh, viewed as archaic, I think in 20 years. But, you know, Elon Musk said some pretty crazy things in the past and uh, well, well, he did them. So let's do it, let's do it. I actually had the, the program director where I trained um, was a bench scientist and she was very convinced and very interested and, and would present lectures on this that totally convinced me about the connection of a, of a, of a virus, a, a real kind of an obscure nasty one called parvovirus B19 and an infection in utero. You know, mom gets infected with this virus, baby 
uh, is more likely uh, to develop schizophrenia. So we know a lot about intrauterine condition, uh, you know, the environment of intrauterine. It starts there. It starts then. Toxicokinetics start then. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you know, mercury being passed to a fetus starts then. It really starts at the moment of conception. So uh, it, it's, I like convincing people of things and I'm going to do my best not to over scientize things, but I want people to realize because most people have taken steroids at one point or another, they get a sinus infection or whatever. They go to their primary care doctor who puts them on a medrol dose pack or, you know, prednisone or some sort of steroid or even inhaled steroids and they're powerful, powerful drugs. And a lot of times they make people feel better when they're really, really sick. Um, maybe they're really sick with something physical. Maybe they had um, um, an infection or maybe they've got a, a you know failed hip or something like that. But I would say the third most, and this is, I'm making this up by the way, in my experience, in my training, I, I paid attention to what were the factors that landed people in psychiatric hospitals. And third on that list were steroids. And here's why. Oh, I, I, I definitely saw that. Yeah. Oh, you see it all the time. Steroid yeah. induced psychosis. All psychiatrists know this. So how is it that steroids are changing the way people think or feel? Because this is a very important clue to understand the bigger picture and that connection between our immune system and the, and the body to our mind and our brain. You know, a steroid can... Um, suppress the immune system. Now, if you're depressed because of an, of an inflammation or an immune response, and then you suddenly curtail that through an artificial means like a steroid, you give someone a steroid, you stop an inflammatory process, which may be happening in their bladder, but it's circulating these nasty chemicals, these interleukins and the cytokines and all of these nasty gook that goes up to our brain and clouds and clogs the way that it functions and, and communicates. Um, steroids have that capacity to not only uh, uh, rapidly treat depression. Matter of fact, I wrote a paper years ago about ultra rapid treatment of depression and end of life care. I was very interested in hospice patients. There's very few things on the planet that can rapidly treat depression. If you're on hospice, you may only have six weeks to live. If I give you, a, if you're sad, let's say you're depressed, uh, however we define that, I give you Prozac, it's gonna take six weeks to work, if it works, if you're one of the lucky 30% and it's appropriate, which I would argue in the hospice patients, they're the least likely to respond yeah. to a drug like Prozac because there's a lot more existential causes for the way that they're feeling. Um, there's a lot more organic causes, but guess what? You can shock their brains with ECT or TMS, which is not shocking. It's magnetics. You can, uh, we talked about ketamine as an ultra rapid treatment. Um, steroids are sometimes used in the ultra rapid treatment of depression because if an inflammatory etiology is, is the, is the causal mechanism for depression or, or even a delirium, which looks like psychosis if it persists, then it will work right away. And furthermore, we're living in a pro-inflammatory environment and there are some people that are so inflamed chronically and their body has adapted and adjusted to it. When you introduce a sudden change like a steroid, what happens? They're off to the races, right? They're, uh, they're going all Charlie Sheen and talking about tiger's blood and winning and warlocks and you know, they get manic as, as all get out. And that's the, the number third cause in my informal mental poll from 20 years ago of why people end up in psych hospitals. They actually can cause mania very, very, very quickly. Well, this, this theory of uh, inflammation being at the root of psychiatric disorders really fits with some of that orthomolecular stuff that I've been reading about where people get high dose niacin and it resolves even schizophrenia, uh, major depressions, uh, anxiety disorders. Um, I, I take this stuff and I think it, it really is powerful at um, just helping me be clear. Well, and you know, in some of my more treatment resistant or refractory schizophrenics, I, I uh, always include niacin um, 
as a I think it's brilliant. I think it's absolutely brilliant and brave because you know you, you you're miles ahead of everybody else, and of course you know speak the truth and run like hell, you know, because nobody wants to hear it. But this is the truth, people. What what Dr. Sylvester is talking about, this stuff works. It it absolutely works, and and most doctors are, are you know I don't I don't know if it's fair to say that they're terrified of steroids, but they're aware of the power of steroids, and so they're um, very uncomfortable doing that. They monitor it very closely, and they're used for a very short amount of time. Well, it's that's an extreme you know of, situation. You know a lot of psychiatrists that talk about inflammation as the cause, the way you do. But I think you're absolutely right, by the way. But who else? Not in not in my community, not in yeah, not I, in Florida. But yes, and there are there are parts of the country and the world where bio, that's what biologic psychiatrists do. That's what holistic psychiatrists do. Well, that's, that's what, what you immunopsychiatrists do. Um, that's what one of the alternatives here at Alternative Psychiatry is to actually look, and you know you you can draw blood and and find and correlate levels of IL-6 with depression, just like you would get an MRI and orthopedics to correlate the, the imaging with, with the symptoms that that patient's reporting. So this isn't rocket science. I don't think it's a major paradigm shift in our understanding. It's a paradigm shift in our practice which Absolutely. is where we, we, we got to go because we're failing miserably and we're seeing more, you know, we've talked about inflammation increasing over the last couple of days, the decades, the trauma from the, the, from the last year and a half uh, increasing. I think uh, it's also increased in the last couple of days around here, you know? <laughs> yeah. Wait, what? <laughs> well, you said days and then you went decades. Oh but, yeah. Yeah. You know, the, the, the kind of, well, but I mean, even if you look at the last year and the kind of cases that we're seeing, the the um, the stress levels are relentless. Is the best word that I've got for it. Just relentless, and and that's going to you know chronic stress. There's plenty of studies on the effects of chronic stress on people, and stress promotes inflammation, and we. Yeah. You know, I don't know if it's fair to say we all are, but as a society and a culture and, and just focusing on America, um, there's no doubt that we're seeing chronic, low-grade, systemic inflammation. Markers popping up are coming more and more common. Um, um, ESR, CRP, a lot of the things that I use to screen for an, an, an um, either an acute inflammatory process, or you can just draw blood and look for for white blood cells and stuff like that, but looking for more chronic, low-grade systemic inflammation. These are the people that are going to have dysthymias or treatment-resistant depressions or worse. They're going to have encephalopathy. They're going to have um, erratic behavior changes in personality. Um, we're seeing that a little bit with the, with the long hauler symptoms. Um, where people are recognizing, like, how is it that I'm still not right up here? And it's yeah, I, yeah, I think there, there's a lot more anxiety and depressive uh, symptoms coming through the long haulers than were originally re reported. Well, I will, you know, to give psychi modern day psychiatrists credit, one thing that that most of them will tell you is that they're aware that there are illness states that are associated for with depression for instance like rheumatoid arthritis they know that there's a correlation with an increased risk of depression now chronic is it pain because their 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 hands hurt and therefore they're sad because can't do as much and go fly fishing maybe maybe i think a lot of doctors say we don't know or maybe it's other causes maybe it's exactly what we're discovering what we're talking about here today which is a chronic inflammatory state can lead to depression. Well, I would say you you have uh, two. You have a cause and a consequence. So you got a cause that's inflammation. You got a consequence. You can't do what you love. Both of them increase the depression, the depressive state. Now there could be more serious illnesses like Parkinson's has a very high incidence with depression. You could say that person's fully aware of the adjustment to their illness. But again, how come we don't see that with paraplegics or or some devastating you know acute change in somebody's 
level of functioning and quality of life, you're more likely to get um, uh, d depression from, from Parkinson's because there's a lot more inflammatory mediators going on with Parkinson's and the degradation of these dopaminergic nigrostriatal cells. We know a lot about the pathophysiology of Parkinson's and we're just now connecting that to why depression is is so highly correlated with Parkinson's. Would, would you say uh, that, that, that it's also connected um, to the physical symptoms? I'll tell you why. I had a Parkinson's patient and his wife says to me, you know, when he goes gambling, a lot of his symptoms go away. Do you think he's faking? I said, no, I think something happens in his brain with the dopamine response when he's gambling. You, we've talked about this before on the show, 90% of schizophrenics smoke in today, to, in America, in today, 90%. Why? Because the dopamine helps modulate inflammation. It helps modulate their psychotic symptoms. What, what we currently know about the dopamine hypothesis of schizophrenia, smoking should make it worse. Increasing dopamine <laughs> should make schizophrenia worse. Drugs like bupropion, Wellbutrin, that increase dopamine should make psychotic symptoms worse. And paradoxically, they do the opposite frequently. Again, I'm in the front row. I'm, I'm, the, I'm the engineer science geek with the tie on and my glasses always going, why, why, why? That pocket protector too? Yeah, I've got one around here somewhere. <laughs> Stroke is another massive injury and inflammatory process highly associated with depression. Um, uh, hepatitis C, you know, what the old before we had Harvoni, which is a miracle of modern medicine, it's clearly one probably the single most amazing discovery in my career. Um, we had interferon, interferon, right? Well, interferon was the treatment for hepatitis C. And what do we know about inf uh, uh, interferon? It is a potent inducer of these inflammatory cytokines. And guess what happens when you get interferon treatments for your hepatitis? Really? Have you not been paying you get, attention? You get, you get depressed? You get severely depressed. Matter of fact, when they, when they prescribe interferon, they concurrently prescribe an antidepressant because they know it's going to cause depression. To me, hello, how many smoking guns do you need to realize your immune system mediates the way you think and feel and behave and your personality and everything connected to it? Well, you think, in the, you think in the past year, we would all become experts on the immune system, but we seem to have more or less forgotten everything we know about the immune system uh, in the past year. So what the hell? Well, it's funny you should mention that because that was one of my pipe dream hopes. You know, how do you make good come out of what the collective shared experience that we're all in, in it together and we're all paying attention to and we're all living through and we're all interested in? To me, this was a tremendous opportunity to make good come from this. And I still think we can. I still think we can. I think we're getting through the initial shock and awe and, we're, and our rational brains and minds are starting to slowly come back online. And we're, we're getting the gift of hindsight here. And I do think that we're going to get some great um, lessons and discoveries and shift in consciousness, which is what this podcast is really all about. Yeah, but you know, you you knew this stuff before COVID, Mark. Well, yeah, and I was. We were also doing telehealth, and no one seemed to know what that was. Well, everybody so, knows now. They sure do. You know, it's just a, you know the one of the great things about working with you is that you're ahead of the curve. I've been called a lot of a lot of things. Well, today so uh, far that's but a, that's a nice one in my in my oh, that, well, thank I've you been, then i've been called a lot of things too and um i resemble that remark yeah something like that but but the bottom the bottom line is you know you think about it all the times if you go well you know um be careful prozac may increase your suicidal ideation vitamin c ivs won't do that yeah, that's a good point. Like for the 70% that Prozac's not going to work for, not only have we wasted precious time, not only have we failed to help them, um, we've prolonged their suffering, right? We've actually created suffering now because Absolutely. we gave them a drug that, you know, hindsight, well, that didn't work, but it cre it, it added side effects. It It may have, if it wasn't prescribed perfectly appropriately 
I mean, obviously it was inappropriate to prescribe it in the first place, but you did, you, you know, if you didn't use the tools that we're talking about here today, you're much more likely to make that mistake. Odds are, you know, 70% of the time, you're going to actually make someone worse, not just not help them fail to, you know, well, waste I mean, their time and all that. One of the things that was so puzzling when I was on the eating disorders unit, we gave people Prozac and their bulimia decreased, but they were still just as depressed. I've had other patients who said, well, I took the antidepressant and I'm actually feeling better, but um, I can't get an erection. You know, I, so I don't know, that, that wouldn't make me feel better, I guess. But, but the bottom line here is what your, your approach, which I think is so, it's so simple that it's brilliant, you know, it's the best stuff usually is. Um, I well, can't see where the side effects are gonna be from it. Yeah, there, there certainly only is. Effect. It's only good effects to reduce inflammation. What you're describing as an elegance to me is sort of the absence of ignorance. It's This is common sense. And this is why I'm passionate about it. This is why I think this is a great topic. And I think that our, our, our viewers totally will get this and, and go, oh my, how did I, how come no one, how come my doctors never explain this to me? One, because the uh, main reason they don't know. And two, how did I not see this myself? How, you know, how did... No one knows your body better than you. I don't care if you have a medical degree or not. If you if you eat red jelly beans and it makes you act crazy, you know that. No one else can tell you otherwise. You know, your doctor says, that's ridiculous. Red jelly beans don't affect the way that you think or feel. Well, actually, we're learning quite clearly. Red dye number 40 is, ve is very immunogenic for some people. Matter of fact, some people are, are quite um uh, reactive to it acutely and so uh red dye and tattoos it was a great old exophiles uh episode where where scully uh in 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 her little paramour go get a tattoo and he starts hallucinating from mm -hmm. the red dye the red ink uh which is very uh, pro-inflammatory um, red can contain a lot of heavy metals which heavy metals are super and pro-inflammatory so th this is something that even in pop culture, they've, they've, they've teased at, but we just, the mainstream psychiatry just hasn't come close to getting on board to this yet, despite, well, back, you know, back, back the, in the, the track uh, record. early nineties, I had a patient that had an, an extreme, what I would call now emotional release and her HIV status flipped from positive to negative. So I get this report. I go, I go down the hall to one of the psychiatrists down the hall. I said, have you ever heard of this? He said, close the door. I, I have, but I can't let anybody know this. So why not? This is incredible. Well, because, you know, I'll get in trouble. This is the culture that we're in. Community standards, something like that. Yeah, luckily I gave up what people think of me uh, caring about that a long time ago. But Me too. Um, but, but, the, but the bottom line is... Maybe the community standards suck. Uh, yeah, and I think one good thing that's come out of the the me 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 generation and and the uh, extreme self centered uh, egotism that is pervasive in our culture currently is it's given people more permission and authority to be confident in carving their own path finding their own truths now this is a double-edged sword a lot of this has led straight to insanity we've talked about that on on the show too but with great power comes great responsibility there's a tremendous opportunity for people to say you know what i'm going to sift and sort through all of the bs messages that i'm getting from all directions and i'm going to go with my deepest truth my 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 understanding of of the world of of my area of expertise um, what I've seen in my clinical practice, what the science tells me, take in all of these variables, and then you make that that decision. That's why they call it a practice. You know, I'll be 100 years old, God forbid, I'm still alive, and I'll still be practicing because it's a constant learning, updating, development, better understanding. More and more dots are being connected, like we talked about before the show. You know, um, I was thinking, I was thinking about this er er earlier in the week. I went to the Bronx High School of Science. That was my high school. And there was this big mural as you go through the front door and it had Galileo and it had Marie Curie and it had Darwin and a couple other dudes, you know, uh, old old people, 
white, old white guys and one white woman. Um, Galileo would not do well today. He had some trouble with the Catholic Church, I hear. And the, the idea that somehow science is not about asking questions. It's not about observation anymore. It's about what we tell you, you know? And to me, that's not science, really. That's just some kind of tyranny. I observe the people that you work with. I know what you do works. I mean, it's just, it's, they're my people. So to me, you're telling me one plus one equals two to somebody else is like, what is this nuclear physics? No, very simple. It works. It makes sense that you reduce inflammation. You're going to reduce symp symptomatology. It, it's look, if, if this is a nerve and, and it's inflamed, if I go like this, it's going to hurt a lot more. You know, you don't, you have to be this guy. Here's Freud. I keep him handy. Um, to me, what you're doing is elegant and, and in, a, in a simple and beautiful understanding of what illness is. Well, I appreciate that. However, it, it pains me to, challenge, to fact check you and challenge you on this one thing because <laughs> two of my heroes came out of the Bronx High School of Science. And I did, after our conversation the other day, I did go back and confirm um, a non-white guy, 1976. Who, who was on point? the wrestling team from Bronx Science? Absolutely. Cool. One of my favorite uh, humans, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Oh, he was at Bronx Science. 76? He did graduate from Bronx High School. Now we've tried to get him on this show, and we will continue to to try. And Neil, tell I know him, you're tell watching him I this went right to Bronx now, Science. So. I, I graduated in '71. Um, yeah. Well, my favorite person graduated from Bronx Science, Robert Moog, who made the Moog synthesizer. Moog. Moog, and uh, yeah, that I think, with all the Nobel Prize winners from Bronx Science, um, Robert Moog is my favorite. Uh, anyway, hey, so what do you, what do you have like a protocol that you use or is that something yeah, you're- uh, I, I do have a protocol, but it's not a one size fits all. But to give you an example, if someone comes in, I look at all of their comorbid medical history especially the unexplained stuff, because everybody has something that no doctor has been able to discover or that all the doctors have said, it's not this, it's, it's just panic or, it, or it's, it's in your mind or we can't find anything wrong from you. So the implication is you're lying or you're crazy or you're a hypochondriac. I start there. I look at the studies, I go through their medical history, I look at imaging, I start with blood work, I look for pro-inflammatory stuff, I look at a, a history, whether they have occupational exposure to chemicals, solvents, heavy metals in their work environment, past, present, future, I look at implanted, um, if they've got penile pumps and they've got a nickel allergy and they got a stainless steel hip, which has nickel and it was rejected, all of those are clues to the connection between the mind and the body. And How about so, past history of substance abuse? That would be a good one. Huh? Or active history. Active I history. can't tell you, 90% of bipolar I undiagnosed because you know this one over here was all hopped up on meth. And the psychiatrist said, well, he meets the check boxes for, for bipolar, he's gotta be bipolar. Actually, no, he didn't even meet the check box because even the DSM says, unless it's caused by a substance or another organic process. I think the substance is easier to not miss. So it's even more pathetic that that's so frequently missed. Yeah. But the organic causes are a little deeper and trickier because psychiatrists stereotypically lose their command of medicine very rapidly after, after medical school. Uh, and that's unfortunate. And I think the training will change to understand more biologic psychiatry. But to your point, if I think that there's a, an, an inflammatory process, maybe this patient has lupus or Crohn's, what I'll do is I will use the, the, the power of, let's say, a of a corticosteroid, right? So if you have a your sinus infection, your primary care doctor gives you 80 milligrams of prednisone or 40 milligrams of methylprednisone, like these really high dose prednisone, I mean, autoimmune or immune uh, in, in modulators or interrupters, you can think of it as. And um, they don't tell you that, hey, they can cause mania. 
they they don't they definitely don't tell you they could help your depression they definitely don't tell you that they often cause anxiety even antibiotics cause that through die off through the herxheimer's reactions and stuff like that so i'm more likely to prescribe an ultra low dose it's almost like western homeopathy so if i give you a milligram of prednisone every day for a month I take your keyed up immune system, if I think you have it, and if there's evidence of you having it, we drop it down a notch. And now that energy that you were using to key up your immune system goes back into maintaining your emotional mental health. So these people on ultra low doses of steroids, poof, ultra rapidly get their depression lifted. Now we have a clue, aha. This is a patient whose depression is clearly immune mediated. Therefore, Prozac ain't going to help them. Let's well, look at I, the I, cause. I was thinking, cause. actually, you know, you mentioned um, heavy duty immune diseases like lupus. But what about stuff that's subclinical? I think that could still affect emotional functioning pretty rapidly. You mean like fibromyalgia or even more subclinical? Well, I, I, to me, fibromyalgia is pretty clinical, but even more, that would certainly be uh, top of the list because, you know, I deal a lot with chronic pain. Um, but I mean, subclinical, you know, you got a lot of people, dysthymics, you know, it's not a full blown depression. It's just people don't get the joy out of life. You know, the life is kind of battleship gray, but they can sort of kind of sort of function. It would seem to me that this would be primo kind of treatment for it because you know no can't imagine what the side effects might be except happiness i don't know um it seems to me that there's a huge population out there waiting for this there is i mean anyone has had the experience when they got a cold or a flu and they're under the weather for two or three days what happens they start to feel depressed even the modern circulating virus they have, it's managed to make it into the news that depression is a serious comorbidity. So that makes sense. Anyone who's had a cold or a flu, two things happens. One, they start to get depressed and it's not just from laying around for two or three days, it's because they have an acute inflammatory state. No, you're Here's making- a more sense. important thing. What happens the day that they start feeling better? when their immune system gets the upper hand and it lowers the inflammation and they're no longer symptomatic, how do they feel up here? They actually don't feel normal. They feel unusually good. You ever notice that after a cold, mm -hmm. your first day back, you're like, oh man, I'm, I'm rocking. <laughs> Absolutely. It's because there was a sudden shift in that energy your body was using into putting it all into the immune system and it gets poured back into your limbic system, literally how well your brain is making you feel. In, in my reading of, you know, I've done a lot of reading of orthomolecular psychiatry and it seems quite fantastic, but from what I'm hearing from you, that you can actually treat schizophrenia with this. Oh, hundred percent. I, I mean, we're, we're gonna have to do a part two. I thought this would be like- I, I really think, minutes, I think so but... too. I think this is great stuff. And, you know, I, I just for everybody out there watching, Mark is the real deal. Dr. Sylvester is the real deal. you got people who haven't gotten better elsewhere. He's the guy, you know, because there's a lot of stuff, you know, um, in my, I used to train psychiatrists and they look at me like I had three heads when I tell them to consider, you know, psychotherapy. But this is even more like on point. Some of these processes do not bend to talk therapy. It's why I developed the mind body stuff, but this is even a bigger mind body, a more comprehensive mind body uh, kind of approach. And that's what we're about here. Well, and the, and what the thing that's really great in my nerves, really busting my haggis right mm -hmm. now is oh, that haggis. science knows this, but the clinical practice of psychiatry hasn't adopted this yet. You know, you were talking about schizophrenia. Did you know that, uh, interleukin one beta and more you know interleukin six which is a major 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 uh marker that that uh any doctor is very familiar with they have they have clearly been uh uh proven to be elevated in the cerebral spinal fluid of schizophrenic patients um there's also a clear association and it's an implied causality but it could be a correlation but it's still relevant that dietary antigens um 
like uh, gliadin and casein that you find in milk that are pro-inflammatory, those serum antibodies, they're elevated in schizophrenia. Um, autoantibodies against the NMDA receptor, which is an area that I've always been really fascinated in because I clearly recognize psychiatry knew the least about it. This is the target for ketamine, the ket not only the ketamine model for schizophrenia, but ketamine as an immuno, immuno mediator uh, for the ultra rapid treatment of depression. You know why you have the ultra rapid effect from ketamine? It's immunomodulation. It could be a chemical ECT as well, and you're getting kind of a one-two punch, but th this is all immune mediated. This is all inflammatory. Uh, these autoantibodies definitely affect the way our brain uh, communicates with itself, different regions, neuronal tracts, the overall functioning, um, voltage gated uh, uh, potassium channels can be targets uh, for an inflammation and the whole system kind of comes to a halt. And you see these 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 huge symptoms these, these psychotic symptoms delirium and think of how how profound delirium is how quick it can happen and how quick it can resolve yeah that's there that to me is the simplest most obvious answer of of why the immune system is clearly related to the way our brain thinks and feels and every day i feel like i'm taking crazy pills myself that my colleagues don't see this um and more importantly <laughs> You're actually saying, patients don't the, believe no, the, this patients don't believe me when i explain this to them and it's well, uh, it's frustrating because they've been well we got a whole other topic on indoctrination perhaps I, I think we definitely need to do a part two of this this is brilliant stuff and um let's do the it truth, the let's truth is, is we 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 really need this in our society we need the understanding and the treatment because the whole place is depressed now Every, the anxiety, the depression, the mental health consequences of the last uh, 18 months are gonna be astonishing if they're not already. Okay, so I guess on that happy note, we should advise people that they should, as we wrap up, they should, they need to one, two, be, be well. well. And we almost got it that time. Couple years, couple years we might get it. Hey. That was great. You, I like this stuff, man. I'm still, I'm still recording because you know I got a. I know, I know. I saw there. the reports. So I, I think this stuff is is fa fantastic. We're gonna go over two cases that, that we're gonna we're working on right now this week, uh, next week, and we'll discuss them. I mean, not personally, but anonymously, well, and, anonymously. and how uh, how immunomodulation helped or didn't help them. So time shall tell. Go for it, my friend. All right. See you next Friday. Be there.